Hello, my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are watching live, those that are watching on Facebook, or those that are watching on uh, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, on Facebook and also on YouTube, those are um, two opportunities where we can interact. So if you have questions during the show, if you have something that, some insight that you may have that you want to share with the audience that's watching, that would be wonderful. Please feel free to engage. And let's keep the conversation going. Please feel free to share if this is hitting you in a certain way and you know of a person or a business owner that this can hit as well. But let's go ahead and get into today's topic and where we're going because we're into a new series. This is part two of the series where the, the conversation is your customer service says it all. Now I want you to take that in for a minute. And as you're taking that in, let me be uh, honest about something right now. This, this, series is, this series is actually very heavy for me. Why am I learning? Because I'm learning a lot, number one. So I'm learning right along with you. It's really hitting a particular area in my life, and it's really showing up, and I'm starting to see the depths of how this, how this really works for people, and also how it works for me. So as you're listening deeply, number two is I'm actually listening very deeply as I'm speaking. So we're both in the same boat right now. This is not a, a point in the finger. This is me more asking you specifically, where are you at right now? Because as a business owner, when it comes to customer service, when it comes to how we feel and how we're dealing with individuals, we feel a specific way. It is very, we're very much so in tune with how we feel and not how the world around, of us, around us is moving. It's very easy to say, you know what, that person has another attitude. It's very easy to say, they just really don't understand what I'm trying to do. It's very easy to say that because, again, we take, an offense, we take an offense to what we may not be doing all the way in. We may, we may not be providing the same customer service that we feel like we feel like we have provided or that we feel like we're providing. Customer service is a loaded thing. That's why I'm going through this with you. Because what I'm understanding, look at it from a biblical point of view and how the Lord is showing me what customer service looks like, it's a night and day situation. Because I'm starting to understand the effect that we have on each other. That's what customer service is boiling down to. This is what this thing is honing into for me. The effect that we have on each other. How much day-to-day -day bothers us when we go and spend some time at a business or spend time with each other. Customer service is showing up everywhere. I'm starting to learn. I never looked at it from a simple fact of even my personal life, customer service means everything to me. It means, that every, it means something to everybody that I'm interacting with. There's a service that everybody expects. So, number one, please go back and listen to the first show. When you listen to the first show, I'm gonna go ahead and warn you. It was very heavy for me in that first show. It's still heavy for me now. So, what I need for everybody to do is sit and listen. Don't disengage. Listen to where everything is at because we talked about it from how God serves and how God expect God's expectations are, how he actually serves us and how this thing navigates into our personal life. And so fast forwarding, let's talk about it from this perspective right here. Customer service is attached to your love condition. Let that sit for a minute. Customer service is based on your love condition. <clears throat> you can only provide and give as much as you currently are currently emotionally. Have you ever tried to give somebody, somebody came to you and said, hey, I, man, I desperately need $100. Do you have it? I need your help. Let's say you're only sitting on 20 until Friday. How do you know you try to give something that you don't have? Hey, wait until Friday. Can you wait until Friday? Remember, they desperately need money right now. But you try to put them on hold until Friday. Again, you have the best intentions to help, and you want to. However, your customer service can't be provided. Not that it's good or bad, but again, we think about ourselves and what we're trying to do for them, and we say, can you wait until... There's a moment that's happening right there. This is, it is very interesting because so the point that I'm making is that we can only give what we have. 
So where is your current emotional condition? Are you frustrated all the time? Can't seem to balance out the emotions? How can you give and say that you provide good customer service with your current heart condition? Where is it at? This is what I'm talking about when it comes to customer service. This is a very personal thing because it attaches yourself to you, especially when you're a business owner. You know, we, we quote unquote pride ourselves on our customer service and all the things that we, that we do for our people and our clients. And we'll go through great ends with this, but I want you to listen as we go in towards the end of the show and how this shows up even personally. But how does the enemy look at your current heart condition compared to this point of customer service? The enemy, this is where you can find the enemy's love. The enemy loves to crash and burn your heart. Is something wrong with the audio? No, because I'm thinking right along with you. The enemy loves to crash and burn your heart. Customer service, as, re as, as revealed in the last show, is one of the first feelings that you ever felt. As revealed in the last show, it's a love communication to others and to yourself. Without, with a current heart condition where you don't feel right, when you don't feel comfortable with, with yourself and your surroundings, and you struggle with your own customer service and your own, and your own care, and then trying to extend it to others, it's a crash and burning. Because the truth is, you may not truly know how to do it. You may not be following God's example in how service looks like. You may create your own example, because again, in order to feel normal, we got to create our own example as to what service looks like. And when you create your own example, it may not show up the way that you want it to show up because you're still searching for fairness. That's a crash and burn scenario right there. Because when you look for fairness throughout your life, there's a crash and burning because if that other end is not fair, guess what? You're upset. Is that really customer service? Is that really love that you're extending? Where is that coming from that you're able to extend that if there's a deal that needs to be made in order for you to do that. Do you see this whole picture here? This is deep. Not because I'm speaking about it. It's because it should drive you to think a little bit more differently. It should drive you to hit your heart a little bit differently today. So now, again, the, the crash and burning of your heart is the lack of extension that you'll be able to extend the love that comes with customer service. If I crash and burn your heart, guess what? The what you extend to the next person to the next person will be even shorter than what you extend at that, at that moment. It becomes natural to you. It becomes a paradigm because you're trying to protect who? You start to, by default, who do you serve the best? Because you, you know what you're going to do. You know how you're going to act. You start to serve yourself. Now, customer service is in the eyes of the beholder. Okay, how do I feel about my customer service? <laughs> you know what, my customer service is top notch. There's no way that you would not want to do business with me because I really love people, I really care. I mean, if you really knew how I looked, at, looked, out, looked after my family and looked at, for my day to day and just all the stuff I do, do you, know, do you know I volunteered for Boys and Girls Club of America? Do you know how much I care? I mean, if you only knew. We have a whole resume that we have developed for ourselves based on the care that we have and that we seem to feel about ourselves. There's nonprofit organizations that you can volunteer that helps you feel and develop a sense of customer service. Develop a sense. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with volunteer. Don't go stop volunteering. But it can, is it possible that we can create our own world and then come to the point of saying, you know what? <laughs> I really care about people. If people only knew, it's people's fault, not my fault. Because again, I really care about people if people really only knew. This is how we operate day to day, people. When we're in this place, how can we say that we extend great customer service? <clears throat> this is where life becomes a struggle. 
Because when you're, when you're operating in this place and you got to the point where you said, I care about people and I'm really good at what I do and I got this whole resume that I've developed for myself and then life is not fair, then somebody disappoints you, then somebody takes you for granted and then somebody takes what you did for granted, what's your first reaction? Oh, oh, you know what? Whew. I guarantee they won't get no service from me again. There's no way. I mean, did you see what, did you see how they acted? There's no way with the way that I love and I care that I'm going to do that again. I'll never do that again. You won't see me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right? We got this whole attitude. We got this preparation. Is that customer service? Think about how that shows up in your life. It shows up in your personal life. But again, it's the same effect that's going on in your, in your business. Because you're thinking at some point there's a fairness that shows up in your business as well. Now, we may try to take a little bit of extra sacrifice because there's something attached to it. There's a little thing called the dollar. It's that $1 bill has you doing a level of, you know what, I'll give them an out, but I won't give my personal life an out. <clears throat> Again, your level of customer service will show up in your personal life and also your professional life. They go hand in hand. You cannot fake customer service because it's going to want, if you do it in one place, great, and you can't do it in another, you, it want, you can't do both if you're struggling personally. Somebody's going to lose. And also, you'll lose at some point also. It becomes a trifecta situation. It's very hard to do this. Because somebody, you may feel like you're winning, but who's doing the sacrificing for what you're struggling with? See, this customer service, as I'm starting to understand, has prong, has a three-prong effect just in that situation. Because there's three people involved. You got your clients, you have you, and also your family. All that stuff is coming into play right now. As we mentioned, the enemy loves to crash and burn your heart. Now, what does that mean? How does that start to apply based on, we, we understood from the perspective I was speaking about earlier, I meant to put the slide up again, but let's go ahead and talk and let's get into the weeds. Because that's what the enemy wants, especially with our day-to-day -day -day lives, especially as business owners. Because as business owners, we have to put on a show every single day we go out. We don't have to, but it's part of the choice that we tend to make sometimes when you're, it's not like you're going to go to your clients and say, hey, I'm struggling personally this year. Hey, wait for me. I'll get everything settled, and then we'll do business later on. That's too much of a sacrifice because that may not, may not ever happen. Okay? In Matthew 24, 12, listen to the scripture here. It's the first time I actually read, read the scripture. It came to me as I was doing my meditation here with the, with the word. And because lawlessness will be, will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The enemy loves to crash and burn your heart. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. Do you see what this slide meant now? Do you see what the enemy is looking for? If lawlessness is happening in your life and you're having so much day-to-day -day trauma going on and challenges maybe in your personal business life, don't you understand that each day your love, your customer service to others is starting to grow cold? You don't have it the way that you thought you had it. Okay? You may try to push through, but when you're pushing through, that means that you're growing cold. You're getting numb. You don't feel. So how can you extend great customer service if you're struggling with how you feel? And when you struggle with how you feel, guess what? When you start to grow old, guess what? When enemies are starting to choke the life out of your heart and make the life around you look, look really unattainable, guess what? I better look out for myself. Let's do that going forward. I better look out for myself. 
Okay? Now, when you get to this point in life, guess what? You've already grown, you've grown cold. How can you extend customer service when this is your mode of thinking? If you, if you say this, if you have said it, I better look out for myself. Now, here's my, here's my asterisk with this. It's not like the Bible doesn't say beware, okay? And we'll talk about that scripture later on, but it's not like the, like, like the Bible and the Lord does not want you to take care of yourself, okay? But he asks you to take care of yourself through the word, but not you look out for yourself. Because when you look out for yourself, you're out for justice. When you look out for yourself, your customer cares has to shut down in order to deal with all the lawlessness that's coming your way. So it starts to shut down your customer service that you truly can extend. But again, you get to the point where you start to compartmentalize, and it's not just a man thing who compartmentalizes, this is a man and woman thing, how you extend yourself because you don't want to get hurt. I better look out for myself. This is where that pain struggle chokes the life out of the customer service that you naturally have that you naturally want to receive, that you naturally want to give, he chokes the life out of that, so that way none of that thing happens to the point where you feel this way. This is how you know your commitment to, to your spirit or your flesh is there, and this is a commitment to the flesh. You no longer feel safe in your environment. That's what the enemy is looking for. But most importantly, to make sure that you don't extend customer service because he wants everybody else to grow cold. It's a mapping plan that's happening right in front of us and it's happening quickly. Because our lack of knowledge, our, my people are destroyed in Hosea 4, 6, I believe. And look at it in the, la, in, the, in the last show. You create a business that provides the appearance. Now you're inciting appearances. Now you're starting to still create because that's how you're created to do. But now you need the appearance of great customer service because the appearance of great customer service provides you with what? Money. Then, if you're serving the appearance, then you're actually in false, now you're in idolatry. Now you're serving a false god called money. And you must follow the laws and principles of whatever rules over you. That's scriptural. That's not me, that's scriptural. Okay, so now that you have created a, a business that provides the appearance of great customer service, now you're actually doubly trapped. Now your heart and mind, is, they're actually very deceived. Now that we're getting to this particular point in, in the segment, guess what? I'm starting to understand what the first show was trying to tell me. I get it now. This is the natural component as to where we are and where we're trapped and we get into a place of idolatry when, our, when we don't understand and we create this business. You have to create the appearance of it in order to receive what you're truly seeking, seeking after. Now, how do I know that? First year. You remember that scramble the first year? You were at every networking event. event you were running all over the place and you met people. You called people the next day. You uh, email people. You make sure you connect with them on LinkedIn. You connect with them on Facebook. You made all these connections. You asked for referrals. They refer all this stuff was going on, all this work. You were hungry at this time. And guess what? There wasn't a time you missed a phone call. There wasn't a time you missed a meeting. It wasn't a time you were late to a meeting. None of that stuff happened, did it? No, it didn't. All right. So now let's talk about the second year. Well, the second year, now you start to get better at your business. Your customer service slows down a little bit. You still have a hint of it going on. Because again, you're not really where you want to be financially. However, it starts to slow down. It starts to kind of compromise and, you know what, I'm sorry to get, people know me. When I go out to Panera Bread or I go out to my spot, my favorite spot, people are like, hey, how you doing, Maurice? Nice to see you. Hey, give me a call. And you're like, okay, you know, you start having the business to business conversation and maybe never had that call. But because you're starting to get good at it. So your customer service starts to dwindle because you're, now you're starting to make a little bit of money. Now, the third year, now it's time, to, you know how it is, business planning. You go into December 15th, or actually probably after the Christmas season or whatnot. You say, you know what, I'm going to look at my plan and look at my couple of years, and I looked at my books, and you know what, it's really time for me to put the, metal, or to put the pedal to the floor. 
time to make more money. Now your customer service goes way down, doesn't it? Because guess what? You're starting, you went from, wow, I'm starving. So now I got a little bit of food. Now I see the opportunity. Now I feel comfortable with what I have. It's time for me to go. Customer service can come at some point. I'll, I'll stay on top of it. You don't, take, you don't check your email as much. Now you have auto reply going for you. So when you're gone, you can still do your thing, so on and so forth. Nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, life is starting to change a little bit. You didn't have those things in the very beginning. Now the fourth year, you're starting to make money. And one, two, and three are a thing of the past. Now, you know what? I only deal with bigger clients, you know, it just doesn't matter. I've, I've already been there before, so I'm not going to do that anymore. See, now, you, now people ha are now a commodity. Your, your, your customer service is a little bit different, is it? Not really worried as much about losing X, Y, Z anymore because, well, you know, I'm really good at what I do. I, I'm, I'm good. Now, completely a year five, you completely forgot about the first year. Now you're ready to hire. You forgot about the first year where you're scrambling and really cared. And guess what? You're at a point, a point right now in your fourth year, right? And the reason why I'm re revisiting the fourth year is because they're a thing of the past. Now you've already forgotten about that, but now you're thinking about how can I extend myself? How can I hire? Is that a great thing? Absolutely. Why am I bringing it up as an issue? Time for me to hire. Why would I bring that up as an issue? I want you to think about that for a minute. Because guess what? You forgot about your customer service and what got you there. Now you're ready to hire in a place where you've gotten used to not, you, you know, your customer service has dwindled down. But now you're ready to hire. Now you're ready to bring other people involved in your entity. Things have taken the shift without the full gears. Now, what are you able to teach your new hire about customer service when you may have forgotten about customer service? Do you see the connection there? So now, what do you learn that's different? You know, and it's not hiring, it's not, hiring is, is awesome, it's amazing, it's an action. But what's the, the thing about hiring that makes everything so different? Uh, you have another person's life in your hands. When you have another person's life in your hands without the understanding of customer service, are you going to be able to teach them customer service and be able to actually illustrate and demonstrate customer service and how it's actually done? Or are you going to go through the same pattern of first year, now you're going to spend a whole bunch of time with them. Second year, let them go, not as much customer service. Third year, you keep on going through this trend because that's your current trend. That's what you're actually demonstrating. Okay? The funny thing about money is it helps you grow faster than where you're really at. That's the thing, that's the weird thing about money. It doesn't tell, it's not going to be honest with you and say, it's just going to say, you have it, you can spend me or not, it doesn't matter. When you hire someone, there's an implied expectation that you understand customer service. People really expect for you to really understand what customer service is about. That means I expect for you to know how to care about me and the clients that we serve now, because now it's not who you serve is who we serve. So you're actually teaching me how to serve the next phone call that comes in. And if that's not taught, well, then there's a shutdown in your systems and your business model. Customer service is the standard in which your business operates. Yes, it's good to say it, but you can tell a business operation based on their customer service. You can tell everything about a business in their customer service and what they believe in. This thing can be masked very easily. It can be masked easily by people, us personally. It can be masked easily by money because it can, you can purchase a customer service system that develops for you. Okay, you remember the appearance of customer service but not really the depth of customer service. That's the difference here. 
Customer service is a glue to every relationship you have. Think about that. While you're in your office and while you're hiring and while you have had an argument with your employee and your employee has an argument with the owner, is customer service happening at that moment? It absolutely is. Because you're teaching me how to relate to you. You're teaching me what this service is about. When I'm an employee and I have a struggle with you and this is how I communicate and this is where we end up, there's a customer service issue. I start to paint, rethink the picture that I thought I had in there. Now, here's how you know customer service is very convoluted. You have you and you to deal with when it comes to your life. You have you, you, your significant other. You, have maybe, you may have kids. You may have employees. You may have clients. So not only do you have a business, okay, so when you look at this tree and you branch off to your left or to your right, now you're looking at this, well, I just have, an, I have a business. I want you to think about this because you start to see in business a whole lot of homes being wrecked because of your business, don't you? Now the customer service for your family and your kids is gone. Do you see? The enemy loves, loves to damage the heart. So if you're more focused and your customer service is all in with your clients because business has a way of just drawing you in, but then that when you get home, everything's in chaos and you have no idea where it's go what's going on, is your customer service still off? It's still not good. Because guess what? Now your significant other and your kids are missing a component at the home. Uh-oh, we got some issues. Have you ran your business so well that your health is now compromised? Uh-oh, there's no customer service. It's not consistent. That means all your customer service and all your love was over here. You can find out where a person love is, where their customer service is. So what happens from here, everybody? Where, where, where do you go? See, business has a way of being a vortex, y'all. There's just small little movements that this whole thing creates, and you have no clue what's happening. And that's what we're doing this show. I had no clue where this show was heading until up until midpoint of this particular show. Now it's starting to really resonate with me. Join in next time as we keep on digging deeper on this thing about customer service. And again, please watch us on Facebook and on YouTube. But in the meantime, I have to go to work. Thank you.